Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Change Podcast. I'm here with Victor Stepp. He is the founder and creator of the Growth Evolution Development blog. And I also actually invited him last time as a guest for my anxiety podcast, which I will link down below. So check that out too. Today, we're going to be talking about another pretty important topic that resonates with a lot of young people like anxiety, and that is procrastination. Ah, I think everybody is guilty of procrastination. So we thought we could invite you, Victor, today to talk about some tips and ways to avoid procrastination. Hey, Victor. Hey, Linda. Thanks for having me once again. Welcome back. It's great to be here. Yeah. So, Victor, let's just dive right into it. What's your story with procrastination? Hi, ah, it's, it's a good one. Good question. Uh, you, actually, you mentioned that everybody, it affects pretty much everybody. Well, it affects those people who actually are, for example, watching this podcast, people who are into improving themselves, people that usually don't have a lot of things going on in their life, you know, live the typical, like really standard lifestyle. They don't experience that much of procrastination. And that's what I felt uh, as I grew up. And my story basically starts as with my childhood. Um, I consider myself a pretty typical kid growing up to parents who came from the Soviet Union. And unfortunately, they, as a child, I didn't get to make many decisions. Everything was always made for me. I didn't, I couldn't choose things. I remember I hated swimming as a hobby, but my parents forced me to do swimming, um, I, I wanted to do something else. They wouldn't allow me. They knew better. Uh, they put me into drawing. They thought that my drawing is not good enough. They took, removed me from the drawing, from the drawing classes. They put me into ice hockey. I wanted to play ice hockey, but they thought I'm not good enough for ice hockey. So they removed Aww. me from ice hockey. And eventually I was doing swimming, something I still hate very much. Um, <laughs> I don't ever anymore swim, but yeah, whatever. Uh, and then also there was um, considering work. Um, I was unfortunately, when I had things to do, my parents gave me some work, whether it is physical work around the house or uh, doing some work for school. I never was rewarded basically in any way for it. And so what happened, my mind lacked this connection between work and pleasure, that work is actually something that benefits you. In my mind, the connection was work sucks. I hate working, it's pain. And also because I didn't get to make many choices in life, I didn't see how choices could positively impact my life. And so what happened as I grew up, I always stayed away from making as many, as, stayed away from making choices. I didn't really feel comfortable making choices, in, for example, in a group of people. It wasn't really my thing. And also that led me, for example, to the studies. First, I, started, I studied at a university college, um, art history, and then I studied software development, completely different things. Right. And the reason for this is because I didn't know what I want to do. I didn't have this idea that like, I can choose my future, my passion. And so, like I mentioned in, earlier in this video, uh, that I didn't even know that I'm a procrastinator until things got really rough for me. And I started to, I wanted to change my life. I started a side hustle next to my day job and that required a lot of work. And here I notice how much of a procrastinator I am. I don't, I doubt the work that I do. I doubt my success in the future. I fear, I fear failure, fear mistakes because nobody ever taught me how to overcome mistakes properly, especially in things that are related to maybe business. Uh, and as a result, uh, I had to create many new habits. I read a lot of books about motivation, self-development, procrastination, of course. And these habits, I needed to make them. And it took some time. It was really difficult, but I think I did a relatively good job. So this is, in a nutshell, my story with procrastination. And we can talk about the habits soon in this video here as well. You, I think you hit upon a really good point that a lot of us, you know, we are pushed to do things that our parents impose on us, that society imposes on us. So we're forced to live a life that's not authentically ours. And I think a lot of that has to do with why we procrastinate because the road is not clear. It's not something that I chose. I don't know what to do, what my next steps are. And because I don't have any answers, I just don't move. I just give up and I push it off till later. 
So I want to ask you, what do you think are some reasons or sources of why people procrastinate? Well, this is a good question. And like I said, because I started in my whole childhood part, is that our life works a lot in the way that we are we are reinforcing certain habits and procrastination is a habit that has been reinforced over time. And partly because as a childhood, for example, we did something and people, like our parents, they didn't uh, help us. They didn't reward us for these things. And in my case, I never was rewarded. And so as a result, uh, I always connect connected. I mean, I do understand that people work and people get money for it. And that's why we work. But on a very subconscious level, I hate working because I never was rewarded. I don't see the benefits of it. And so that's one way because we are brought up. Some people, um, I remember I had kids in my class who always said like for every good grade in school they got money from their parents not much but still some kind of money and that always I saw how motivated they were to create you know get good grades in school I obviously didn't <laughs> and um, so that was one of the reasons and then um, of course doing something we don't want to do exactly what you mentioned uh, when it's um, when we're first forced to do things we don't want to do and then we live and then like I said I started art history hardly got you know passed by their courses just worst grades then went into software development again started working not something i like and that's why we procrastinate because we're not in the right place to i mean it's it's easy to say find a purpose but it's a complicated thing it's hard to find a purpose but one thing that i'm <laughs> fully confident is that you don't procrastinate when you do something you love which is why it's very important to think always ahead and to uh, really weigh all the pros and cons around the things that you're doing because the more you like something the more you're passionate about something the easier it will be for you to uh, work with it and then of course like some basic things like fear of failure fear of judgment we fear so much and it's like ah, I don't want to make a mistake I, I don't want to change uh, I don't want to do this thing and then I push it away for example and then the also which is really important what people always, often forget about is the physical health the body's health because it's our temple if our body is sick there's no way our mind will be in a positive state of mind an energetic state of mind that can actually push us to overcome obstacles um, getting enough sleep extremely important if you're sleepy there's no way you're gonna ever finish any big task yeah. and um, your diet um, you might be deficient on some vitamins uh, and vitamins deficiency in vitamins won't kill you but if you're not feeling healthy like i said your mind won't feel healthy either and then of course exercising which is extremely important i exercise daily or at least i try to exercise daily <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the, the thing is that by exercising we increase the speed with which toxins are released from our body which makes us uh, toxins make us feel sick so we, by exercising, we're basically healthier. And then, of course, uh, endorphins, which uh, interact with the brain. I'm sure you know all about this. And uh, they make us feel better and basically happier. And that's also a big part of overcoming procrastination. It's the mindset, but also how well we physically feel. Yeah, I think a big part, you know, when I look back on, you know, I, I can't say that I'm a perfect, no procrastinator person, even Nobody. now. You know, Nobody. Everybody still procrastinates. I'm still guilty of procrastination. And when I look back, I used to procrastinate a lot more. So when I look back and think, why do I procrastinate? You know, because procrastination is such a big thing that people struggle with. And when I look back, I really feel one of the big things why people procrastinate is because we look too much at the too big of a picture so if we look too big and too much into the future it's very easy to not know what the next step is and when you don't know what the next step is you get like oh uh, like scared and you don't see any path so you just want to avoid it so for people who feel like i don't know what to do and i'm just gonna leave this off until later like maybe check to see if your mind is getting too ahead of your present condition it's good to have a goal and see which direction you want to go to but if you think like too big of i need to do a million things and i don't know where to start i think that's a big reason why me personally i procrastinated yeah that's a very valid point uh, 
I, and as a, an example from my career from software development, it's like you start talking to the client and they tell you, we want this project and they explain all what it's going to do, all these functions. And you're like, oh my God, this is going to take forever. And there's just too much stuff. And then you start building the application step by step. And that's exactly how you should uh, overcome procrastination by creating goals, overcoming them step by step. Don't look at the whole big picture. Like you said, that's just, sometimes it pushes away really much and just look at the next step. And when you're there, take the next step. Right. And another big thing is um, I, you know, we all have a certain amount of energy in our bodies, kind of like a cell phone, you know, a cell phone, when you charge it, it has a certain amount of batteries that you can use for doing apps or searching the web or doing other things that take up the energy. I feel like we have that in our bodies. And a lot of the times when I find myself procrastinating, we can always use our energy for our thoughts or we can use our energy for our actions. And when I catch myself procrastinating, I'm using all of my energy thinking about why I'm not taking the action. Oh, because it's raining today. Oh, because my body doesn't feel good. Oh, should I do it? Should I not do it? What consequences do I have not to? You see what I mean? Like I'm using all of yeah. my energy for the thinking rather than the action. So I think when people can clearly see that you always in every situation have a choice to use the energy in your body for thinking or acting, then we can see, okay, am I overthinking this and thinking a million reasons why I shouldn't do it? Maybe try channeling some of that energy towards, okay, even if it's a small thing, like for example, if you're really not motivated and you're just lying down in bed and you're thinking, thinking about all these things to do, maybe one small action that you can take using your energy to take action is, it doesn't have to be big, maybe just get up from your bed, right? Yes, exactly that. And then the next step, okay, maybe I should put my feet on the ground <laughs> and then maybe I should stand up. Just take one step at a time. Don't think about, oh my God, I have to plan a three month, you know, three month business plan for my, for my self-development blog. You don't have to think that far. Just one step at a time. Use more of your energy towards action rather than thinking. Yeah, that's great that you mentioned. I don't remember who this was about, but I was listening to an audiobook and there was this talk about this person that wrote like a lot, like super much during the year. And then this other person asked him, like, how did you do it? It's just so much work. And he said, I, I made, I basically set a goal to write at least 50 words a day. And what happened is that I wrote 50 and then I wrote another 50 and then I wrote another 50 and it actually turned out to be a lot. And also about draining thoughts. I remember, I think it was Mark Zuckerberg he talked about how he used to wear the same flip-flops, the same clothes all the time because he didn't want to spend the energy thinking about what clothes to wear. So it, it can get really <laughs> that intense. So yeah, draining energy is a really valid point. You he still wears the same thing, I think. I'm sure he does. <laughs> it's been like years, like decades since Facebook first opened. Yeah. 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 So I think you touched upon this a little bit, but what are some good habits and tips to develop to be more diligent and proactive? I think everyone can be a little bit more diligent and proactive. What are some of your personal tips? Yeah, this was something I had to work on when I said that I was a big procrastinator and that I needed to create new habits in my life. And one thing that I uh, probably that has affected me the most is, of course, goal setting. When you set goals, you know, I have like these daily, weekly, and monthly goals. And of course, I have the final vision of what I want to do five years ahead. And when you have daily goals, you have like four, day, four goals per day. Uh, you really know what you're going to do and you don't procrastinate because if you take your goals seriously, you want to accomplish those goals. And if you haven't accomplished some goal, then you know you're behind. And so that really motivates to procrastinate and to, uh, to set goals. I don't... I simply have it on my, you know, my phone, like these bullet points, and I just check them off. And that's really, it feels rewarding to check off these bullet points. It's, it's just really nice. You don't need to uh, write it on, even on paper, but make sure that you set goals somehow, either written or on phone, not just in your mind, because as soon as you stop thinking about them, your goals are gone. Uh, and also one thing is what changed my life is getting up very early. Now, I am getting up maybe a little too early for some people, but I most of the time I wake up 4 a.m. And then when I had my day job, I would go either to the gym first and then to my day job. And then, and then I would, after it work, I would side hustle. Uh, and what I noticed is that I have so much energy in the morning. And 
like a lot more than any other time of the day. And if I wouldn't have tested this out, this waking up at four in the morning, I would have never known that I'm so energetic at about five, six in the morning, just perfect timing to either work out or to do some work. And so wake up early, try that, because at the end of the day, you're tired and you're just more inclined to procrastinate. You don't want to do the things, you're just, just tired. And also what's really important is to do the most difficult tasks first. Don't, I know it's a natural reaction to leave it until the end, simply because it feels unpleasant to do it. But the sooner you get over it, the better. Then you're left with the smaller tasks and they're so much easier to, to accomplish. Um, what also helps is to group tasks. Like for example, um, if you, sometimes when I look at my day and I'm like, hmm, I did a lot of things. And then I think about it, like what did I actually do? I sent throughout the day emails and answered in Facebook to people's messages. And so what I figured is what helps a lot is to, uh, is to group tasks. For example, you don't look at your email the whole day and then you have this one hour a day where you just sit focus on sending out replying to emails and Facebook messages and then I also I remember came across this Pomodoro technique I don't know if you've heard it's this it's an Italian word for tomato and the idea comes from you know those kitchen alarm clocks where you like twist and then they move around and they start ringing uh -huh. it looks like a tomato and the idea is that you set 25 minutes and you're just focused in the flow state so you, you don't do anything else your cell phone is turned off your social networks are not there this is part of this oh whole my goodness thing. that's gonna cause anxiety for people yeah, exactly this is part of this setting good habits you just take everything to the side it's going to be so much easier to work on your tasks you work for 25 minutes then you have a three to five minute break and then you do this for four times and then you can well either stop or then have a 20 minute break and then start again the pomodoro technique it's called super helpful and of course turning off your cell phone does miracles we're just i don't know about other your listeners but for me, it's a problem. On the one hand, I always say, well, it's part of what I do. It's part of my work being on the internet, on the phone all the time. But then I just use it as an excuse to sit in Facebook. And go on Facebook, right? And Instagram. <laughs> exactly, exactly. It's like, I'll check it out for a minute and then ugh, procrastinating for the next 40 minutes. So, Yeah, that's very true. So my tip that I have for procrastinators is, okay, this sounds very just like, you know, you probably heard it a million times, but honestly, you just got to do it. You know, like when you have a task that you have to do, for example, I have to take out the trash, right? That's a task that you have to do that. It's very easy to procrastinate because nobody likes taking out the trash. So, so when you know that you have a task that you have to take out the trash, you have to just act before thoughts come. Because if you don't act, the thoughts will come. You will say, okay, I have to take out the trash. Oh, but, but my legs hurt. Oh, I'll just take it out later. And then the thoughts just keep thoughts, create more thoughts, create more thoughts. And then you just go down that thought rabbit hole and then you're too far deep and now you can't take action. So before that chain reaction of thoughts come about a million excuses that we all have, why we can't do certain things before that comes, if I say, Oh, I have to take out the trash. Okay. Just get up and do it before the thoughts come, because when the thoughts come, no one can beat your thoughts. Your thoughts are very tricky. They're very convincing. So it's very yeah. easy to listen to your thoughts. So just get up and do it before the thoughts spiral you into the hole. Yeah, it's, it's actually a really good point. I also use this with anxiety because whenever I know I'm afraid of something, I'm, I need, like I remember I needed to sign up for those presentations and I knew that I wouldn't be, do, I, I can't do it. I was just like, la, 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 I'll do it, I'll do it now. And then I just sign up for it and then, okay, I didn't have time to think about it. And so I do it. And that's with procrastination, like you said, also just move, move, don't, yeah. don't stop. Yeah, just take action. Don't think, just do it. Move. Good. <laughs> so... If there's something that people are procrastinating with right now, if there's a task that they're procrastinating with, what can they do at this moment to get motivated? Oh, good one. Well, first question is always, is it like a small task, like taking out the trash or is it something life changing? And if it's, of course, if it's something like throwing out the trash, you answered it. But if it's something life changing, like maybe to do with your education or work, you have to ask yourself, like, why is it important to you? What will I achieve if I do this task? What's the purpose of it? And if it's something meaningful, then um, 
you will do it. You'll, you'll find it, it will work. I often, like, I make a mistake. I'm just, I just feel so sad sometimes and I'm just procrastinating. And then I always return back to my vision. Why am I, why did I make this mistake? Why did I do it in the first place? Why did I try to over, uh, accomplish this thing? And then I remember, because I have my vision, nobody said it's going to be easy. And so, of course, this is, again, related to purpose. And you may be in a, <laughs> and if, well, if it's something you have to do, but you totally hate, then find somebody to do it for you, if it's a possibility, <laughs> of course. But also, if it's, like, for example, I really hate bookkeeping, but bookkeeping is something, if you're earning money on your own, you something you just have to do. And I have a one hour a month just set for it where I just do it. I totally hate it, but there's just no, <laughs> way, no way around. And this comes back to goal setting. You need to set a specific time every single month, same day, same hour, when you're going to do this. Um, and, that, and that helps a lot. And then finally, of course, is what I did along the way, which has, uh, this has been something that has helped me since the beginnings, and I still do it every single day, is I consume motivational content. I feed my brain with books and self-development, with people who are about motivation on the internet, whoever it is. I started with, this is what started my, uh, me, this is what got me out of this hole that I was in, this rough place, and this is what keeps me going when I now make mistakes and just feel really down. Um, I sit down and I don't want to do something, I just am procrastinating. I, I just quickly turn on some YouTube channel that's really about motivation like yours, for example, and I watch it and then I'm like, oh, they're doing so good. I need to do this also. And then I just get up. It motivates me. Other people's success motivates me. Others people, other people, how great other people have become, that motivates me to become better as well. I don't, most people, they envy other people who are so successful. I used to do that all the time. This is my natural me. I used to envy everybody because everybody was better. That's what I thought. But when I changed my mindset and I look at other people's success and I admire it, I try to imitate it and just to use them as a great example. And that's what helps me with my procrastination, with motivating me to take action. I really love what you said about, think about why this is important for you. You know, and it kind of goes back to what we mentioned in the beginning that a lot of us are just doing things because society imposes it on us, our parents impose it on us, so we don't have a real reason or it's not clear in our minds why I need to do this, right? So I think that's so important that whatever it is that you do in your life, that even if you're doing it because your parents told you to, or even if you're doing it because society told you to, if you are clear why I am doing this, if you can find a reason a purpose, like you said, in that action, then now it becomes something that you do proactively, you plan proactively, rather than just doing it passively. I'm just going with the flow. I don't know what I'm doing. Maybe I'll figure it out, that kind of thing. So I really love what you said about find why it is important for you. I think that's key. Yeah, yeah it really is. In anything that you do in your life, ask yourself, why does this task I have to do right now? Why is it important for me? Yeah, as grown-ups, we have the luxury to think why we do the things that we do, and we uh, we get to choose what we do. And so, if you're um, sitting there and procrastinating on tasks that you should be doing, then I just suggest that you just sit for a little while and just ask yourself, what's the purpose of it? Why, why do you do this? And I'm sure you'll find good answers that will motivate you to take action to overcome this procrastination. Right, and maybe at in the beginning, it might not be clear, like going back to the yeah. trash thing, going, taking out the trash, maybe at first it might not be clear. Why do I have to do this? I don't see the point yeah. why it benefits me. But if you really think about it and look at every situation, if you don't take out the trash, your house is going to stink. If your house stinks, it affects your physical, mental, emotional well-being. So if your physical, mental, emotional well-being is affected, it bleeds into your work. It bleeds into how you react with people. So of course, it's important for you because of your, because of your well-being. So like this, and my point is in every situation, no matter how dreary it might be, no matter how dreary bookkeeping might be, if you don't do it, your business is going to go crazy, right? Exactly. So find there's, yeah. if you look in every situation, there's a reason why this benefits you. So find that. Yeah. And if you think that s small tasks like taking out the trash are not important or not that important and you can, it can wait. I tell you that. The whole thing with this is that 
life is made out of small little annoying tasks like taking out the trash and brushing our teeth. And if you don't take the trash out at, on time, if you don't brush your teeth, you, be, you get into a habit of procrastinating just with everything. And start with the smaller things. Just do this on time. Do that on time. And as a result, you'll see how you're improving in every area of your life. So it starts with the smaller things, but it grows to the bigger areas of life as well. Yeah, that reminds me that, um, you know, we think that life, our lives are changed by big, big monumental life events or big choices. But actually, how we are right now is an accumulation of many small things that made us in this emotional, physical state that we are. So if you're physically sick, it's not because of one big disease that made you sick, but actually a small repetition of bad habits of not exercising, not eating right, that accumulated to you being sick. If you're emotionally drained, it's not like a big, your boyfriend broke up with you, so now you're really sad or something like that, but an accumulation of small things that brought you to this point. So That's perfect. We cannot overlook how important the small things are because that is what makes us as a whole. It's life. Yeah. As difficult as it may be sometimes. Right. Life is a, an accumulation of many small moments, small memories that made you who you are today. Yeah. So, Victor, do you have any final advice for people who are procrastinating and still need some motivation? Yeah, probably this one point that life is too short to procrastinate. This is something I unfortunately realized only like three or four years ago when I finally got into self-development and trying to make myself better. I started to think how much time will I need to do this and this and this. And then I realized that there's so little time left and that I'm so, so unfortunate that I started so late. But then on the other hand, I, that's the only way I could start. I needed to go through all of these life stages in order to come to this point. And so every minute counts. Life is, there's just 24 hours every day. We sleep a third of our life. Don't procrastinate. Find a purpose. Do something that you enjoy and just work towards achieving your goals. And when you actually do find a purpose, you won't even feel like procrastination is a procrastination is a thing anymore. You'll just be in a positive state of mind a lot. And that really helps. So life is too short. Please don't procrastinate. Take action. What you said just reminded me of a quote that I really love. You know, a lot of people like to sleep procrastinate and just sleep in sleep late you know just just a lot of people like sleep but they yeah. say you can sleep forever when you're dead even if yeah. you don't want to you can sleep forever when you're dead while you're alive don't sleep and live exactly i people always say like i, I want to go rest i always say that you'll rest in the grave so please <laughs> <laughs> that's basically the same thing yeah i love it so victor if the audience wants to get to know more about your blog and see what you do where can they find you uh they can visit the url gedground.com so growth evolution development ground.com and uh i guess you'll leave a link in the description to it yes i'll leave a, yeah i'll leave a link down below for people who want to go visit his site Thanks a lot, Linda. And that's basically, you can find me through also social networks that are linked at the blog. Great. Thank you so much, Victor. Thank, Thank you, everybody. You, I hope this podcast helped you to get some motivation for procrastination. If you have any other topics that you would like us to cover, please let me know in the comments below and we'll make sure to address those points. If you have things you want to leave for Victor, also leave those in the comments below and we'll respond to every single one of them. Thanks so much, Victor. Thank you, Linda. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye, everyone.